Hi everybody, welcome to Glenn Carlin's video blog. I'm Arko Lama, the head winemaker at Glenn Carlin. And today we're going to be talking about um, the wood usage um, at Glenn Carlin and the different ways that we use it in the wines that we produce. Um, behind the camera today again is Beatrice, my assistant winemaker, and he's going to help us e explain all, all about the barrels uh, that you can see around you. Um, wood has been used in the wine industry for, for many, many years, uh, generally used in wines to, to soften them or to um, give aromatics on, uh, on different cultivars. Um, and if you have a look at the different ways that we do it, um, you have the wine, the wine barrel. Wine barrels have been made and used in the world for probably over two to three hundred years. Uh, used from anything from curing um, fish uh, to storing water when traveling over the seas when, when, they, when they were traveling around, around the world and also used in all different types of um, uh, spirits uh, industries as well as port. Um, in, in spirits uh, they use a lot, a lot of older wood and in, in, in the wine industry we tend to use uh, um, some new wood and then we use some older, older oak as well. Now the reason why in the spirit industry they only use older oak is uh, they need more of the mellowing of, of the wood. So that means just, just the softening and, and the slow oxidation process that you get from the barrel. Where with, with the wine industry you tend to use um, new oak and older oak in combination or, or separately depending on the type of wine that you want to produce. Now if you come and take a closer look um, I've just taken out different barrels that we use on the winery and different sizes and shapes that we have. Uh, this is a 400 litre barrel and um, this is a brand new barrel, a uh, 2010, um, uh, uh, sorry, 2010 barrel which means we bought it this year. It's a 400 litre. This is a 2008 barrel, um, a 300 litre barrel that we, we use as well. And then you have these two which is mostly used in the wine industry and um, being a uh, Bordeaux shaped barrel, um, a 225 litre as well as a Burgundy shaped barrel which is also 225. You can note the shape is slightly different. A little bit more of a chubby barrel and this is slightly longer and uh, also uh, has, has, has one, one, one or two different uh, things with it uh, um, which, which we'll have a look when we, when we look at the top of the barrel. And then I've got these beauties here which, which I really like. These are um, 6,300 litre wooden vets. Uh, this is basically the largest size that you can transport without having to break it, break it up. You get to the Coopers that actually make even larger barrels um, anywhere from 10,000, 15, 20,000 and interesting enough, in South Africa at the KMV, they've got the three largest wooden vets in the Southern Hemisphere under one roof. And those are 300,000 litre barrels. Uh, so they're very all different sizes. You can even get them down to uh, home usage to keep a little bit of port by, by, by a 10 litre barrel which gets made by a general craftsman. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of information on the barrels if that just comes in. And, we're going to look at the head and explain all the information on, on, on the barrel. So come through that and let's look at, the, look, at, look at the head here. So we'll give you the general information. Now what you're looking at here is you're looking at um, all, all, you get probably about 80 different coopers who, who, who try to sell wood in South Africa. We selected the, the coopers that we predominantly use. This is a barrel from uh, DMJ or Dago Jagel Tonleri, which is a coupe in France. Then you have a, uh, what is called Selection 2. They've actually changed the way that they um, uh, talk about oak in France due to the regions melding in. You get different forests, so that you, you'll have a look on this next barrel, um, which was bought in 2008, which means that this is now a third full barrel. Um, they have a letter A, which means Allier, which is a, a forest in France. What they've done is now combine a couple to, to use the names Selection 2, you get Selection 1, you get Bourgogne, 
uh, and a couple of others that we use. Then you have uh, what is the MT, uh, which is medium toast. You get different toasting levels with, with wood. Uh, you get medium, medium plus, uh, heavy toast. It all depends on, 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 on the type of flavor profile that you want to get from, from, the, from, the, uh, from the barrel for your wine. As you can see, this 400 is a, is a heavy toast barrel. Then you can have them branded with, with your name on, um, which obviously looks really nice in, in, in the winery when you use it. Now, like I said, the, this is the vintage, so this means that we bought it this year. This barrel hasn't been used at all yet, and this is a 2010 barrel. So if we were, if we were to fill it now, we, it, it is called your first fill. You get your largest amount of wood coming out in, in that year. And uh, then, like I said, the 2008 is called the second fill because we have used it for the last three years. So the next fill will, uh, you get, then 09 will be second fill, 08 third. And you can have a look here, this is actually a barrel that will be thrown out quite soon. This is a 2004 barrel. And uh, this is about the maximum usage that we use, uh, use our barrels for. Now, this is quite interesting, the, the um, Bordeaux barrel has got thinner staves and this is a plank that actually protects the head. Um, you talk, uh, the stave is anywhere from 22 to 27 millimeters. And the thicker stave is used mainly on, on, on the burgundy barrel. And again, yeah, you can see this is Centre France. Also quite interesting, this is a, a barrel that's got toasted heads, which means that the, the, the barrels have been put on the fire, which, which they toast the oak, but they also toast, toast, the, toast the heads. And then they belong to a, um, a certification board that you can actually trace your, your oak from, from the auction near house from the forest. Uh, then they, they make the barrel that you guarantee that you're getting the wood that you're, that you're asking for. Um, because you get all different types of wood. You get American oak, French oak, Hungarian oak, Polish oak. They're all, they're all uh, um, used in the wine industry, but predominantly the French oak is used and the, the trees are usually only harvested after about 150 years. There's been a lot of pressure on the, on the, on the wood um, industry to uh, prove sustainability in using uh, oak in the wine industry. And that they say that they plant two to three trees for every tree they cut down. But it's still, it's a, if, you take, if you think it takes 150 years before you can cut that, that tree, um, you, <laughs> we hope that they are, 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 are sticking to, to what they're saying about, about the use of uh, uh, the replanting of oak. Now we actually, as you can see, um, we stack our barrels in a very classic way, um, basically one on top of the other. Larger, larger area uh, cooperatives may use uh, a steel cradle that can be moved with the forklift. However, these we actually use a, a wooden cradle. Then the barrel gets placed flat onto the ground for your first level, and then the cradle is used it you can put another one on the other side and you can stack up to about eight eight high we only stack around four high this is then your entry point into the barrel this is called the bun hole and what you get um, obviously what is called a bun which is used to protect the wine from oxidation and uh, like you've seen in the past we have to go through if uh, I think about six videos ago we were talking about topping because you get a lot of um, uh, evaporation happening through the wood. So you also, there's different ways of using the barrel. Um, a lot of people experiment differently. You, you can actually take these hoops out, which then relieves the stress, stress on the oak, and you can take the head out and do fermentations on the skin in the barrel. Um, some, of the, some of the bigger barrels also have a, a larger lid at the, at the top. And they range from all different shapes and sizes. Uh, you, you get sort of like an egg shape, um, but mainly, uh, mainly the barrels that we use here is anywhere between a 400 and a 225. Now what's important also to understand is that the, 
the larger your barrel, the less surface area there is for your for your wine. So the smaller barrel, you have more surface area of wood per per liter of wine. So with a larger barrel, there's less wine per uh, uh, sorry, there's less uh, um, wood uh, for the amount of wine uh, per liter. With uh, with the 600s, it's even more so. Uh, 6,000 liter barrels, it's even more so. They uh, their surface areas are, are very low, so you we use them a lot for basic ox oxidation, slow oxidation of, of the of the wine, and we can use these for easily 10 to 15 years. And uh, my rule with them is always to, to keep them open after to keep them full because uh, it's. Wood is an absorptive material, so it, it uh, takes a long time to dry out and can draw bacteria and so forth, and thereby um, you have problems of, of spoiling the wine. Now, the way that we use the oak here in the wines we produce, um, if you look at our website, we've got our cord stone and gravel quarry that is 100% new wood, which means we only use new barrels for the time in barrel. Uh, cord stone is 11 months in wood. Gravel quarry is 18 months. Then you're looking at our classic range. Our, our classic Chardonnay is 30% new wood. Then we use 30% uh, second full, third and fourth full oak. And Grand Classic is very similar, about 50% new wood, and then some second and third full oak, and that's up to 18 months in barrel as well. And uh, a lot of people want to know what happens to the barrels when they when they are no longer used in the wine industry. You can either sell them to smaller garages, wineries or people that, that are, are, are wanting to use barrels for a longer period than we do. Mainly in South Africa they usually just get cut in half and they use them as pot plants outside. But a whole new industry has started up where they use the barrels to make furniture. The chairs in our restaurant are actually made from, uh, from old barrels. Uh, bedside tables, um, cheese boards from the gates, pizza boards, um, candlestick holders, anything you, you can think of. They, they make it on, they actually use in the, um, in the uh, cooperage when they uh, toast the barrel, they use French oak cuttings to do the toasting. Now there's, I know there's a lot of information, there's even more to talk about. Uh, with barrels um, to the, the oxidation process and wooding and that, but I just hope that this is giving you a little bit more insight and a little bit more information on, on, on barrels. And uh, we'll always be talking about them in the blogs and giving more information, but hopefully this has helped and uh, we'll see you next week. We'll probably go through to the vineyards again. It's almost pruning, pruning time, so we'll get Morris to help us out uh, looking at the core stone with the final pruning um, at, uh, at the end of uh, next week. Right, have a good weekend and we will see you next week.